Greetings, everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the increasing, decreasing test uh, to determine uh, when a function is increasing or decreasing. And um, we're going to talk about how to do that by looking at its graph. But the increasing, decreasing test actually talks about how to do it analytically, just by doing some, some calculus and looking at the, um, the expressions that emerge. All right, so this is what this video is on. All right, so here we have uh, two functions. We've got a function um, f and a function g. So here we've plotted y, the points uh, x, y, given by y equals f of x, and that's the graph of f. And here we have the graph of g. And the question here is, over what intervals are the functions increasing or decreasing? So what intervals of x what intervals of numbers on the x-axis are these functions increasing or decreasing? Well, let's think about what that means. Suppose that the x-axis represented time, all right? So as time goes on, uh, maybe the y-axis represents the height of something. So we have this bird flying or something like that. So as time goes by, the height of the bird is changing, right? So the, the, the height may be going up as time increases or it might be going down. Well, and from that perspective, you can see that the height is decreasing as time goes from time zero to time one. And the height is increasing as the time goes from uh, one to three. And the height is decreasing in this interval and the height is increasing on in this interval. So that's how you see if a graph is increasing or decreasing. You just ask, is the graph going down or up as I move from left to right? If it's going down, it's decreasing. Going up, it's increasing. Okay, so as you move from left to right, are we moving up or down? Up is increasing, down is decreasing. And so the intervals of increase and decrease for this function up here, f of x, so let's do the intervals of increase. Well, um, from here to here. So that's from 1 to 2, 3. So the interval uh, 1 to 3. But we also have another interval of increase from here to here. So let's see, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So from 4 to 6. So whenever I want to join two intervals together, I use the union symbol. So that's the, those are the intervals of increase. And I've unioned them together right, to, to create one set. And for decrease, well, it's going down from here to here, so on the interval 0 to 1. And it's uh, going down from here to here, so from 1 to 3 to 4. Those are the intervals of decrease. Okay, now let's look at the graph of G. Now I'd like you to take a moment, pause the video, and work this out on your own, and we'll compare our answers, all right? And I'll get out of your way here. Let me get my annoying face out of this, out of this business. Okay, you got it? Let's look at this. Increase and decrease. Okay, so um, as I move from left to right, I see that the graph is going up from here to here. So it's increasing on the interval 0 to 1. And it's decreasing on the interval 1 to 2, 3, 1 to 3. Um, it's increasing on the interval, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from 4 to 5. It's increasing. But it's it levels out right here, but then it starts increasing again. So it's also increasing on the interval 5, 6, 7. So you'll note that at this one instant, uh, we, we won't say it's increasing or decreasing. It's just kind of levels off here. So we have this slight interruption. So you, you might say, isn't that everything? Well, in fact, that's not everything. We have skipped over the number 5. You see, these are open intervals. We do not include 5 as the endpoint. That's why I'm using round brackets. And you'll note that's an important feature of all these intervals. I never used a square bracket on any of these. Uh, a square bracket would indicate that that particular number is included. But you can't really say that a function is increasing or decreasing at any one number. You can only talk about whether it's increasing or decreasing over a range of numbers, over an interval of numbers. So we'll never use square brackets 
when writing these down, we will always use round brackets. All right, <clears throat> here's a question. How can we tell whether a function is increasing or decreasing without looking at its graph? And I'll just pop back to say hi again, just so that you know I'm here. Um, so uh, we have the increasing and decreasing test to, to tell us this. And uh, the observation that we make is that, uh, well, if the derivative of the function is positive on an interval, then f is increasing on that interval. Now let's just see if, and, and actually let's read this next line. If the derivative is negative on an interval, then f is decreasing on that interval. So let's see if these make sense. If I look at the previous pictures here, um, look at this. When, when I'm decreasing, what's true about the derivative? Well, if I look at the derivative, derivative is the slope of the tangent line. The tangent line will have negative slope, right? And so that means the derivative is negative. And when the function's increasing, the tangent line will have positive slope. That means the derivative is positive. So that's verifying what we see here. All right? When the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. When it's negative, the function is decreasing. Uh, so this is the increasing-decreasing test. We just check the values of the function's derivative. So here's some questions for us. Find the intervals on which uh, f is increasing or decreasing. So here's our function. Now, we could graph it and look at the graph, but since we have this increasing-decreasing test here, why don't we just do it analytically using that test? And uh, I'll get myself out of the way here so we can see better when we start filling this up with work. All right, so we want to find where this is increasing or decreasing, so we're going to look at where its derivative is positive or negative, so we have to compute the derivative, right? So let's do that. F prime. Well, I differentiate this first term. x cubed's derivative is 3x squared. Uh, 3x squared's derivative is negative uh, 6x, and negative uh, 9x derivative is negative 9, and plus 4's derivative is just 0, because it's a, it's a constant, right? So this is, the, this is f prime. Now, I want to know where f prime is positive or negative. Now, let me show you something. For, for this particular f prime, we know this is a, well, this is a second degree polynomial, and so we know its graph is a parabola. Moreover, the leading coefficient is positive, so I know it's a parabola opening upwards. Right? So its graph will look something like this. And so I can see where it's positive and where it's negative. This is a graph of f prime, keep in mind. This is not a graph of f. This is a graph of f prime. And I can see it's positive over here and over here, and it's negative over here. Now, the trick to finding where any function is positive or negative is to look at these points over here and here. These divide the regions where it's positive from where it's negative. So if we can find these points, we'll be able to find the intervals that we're looking for. Well, these points are where the function's equal to zero. So to find where any function's equal to, where it's positive or negative, we first look for where um, it's equal to zero, okay? Well, if I set this stuff equal to zero, I can divide both sides by three. Everything's divisible by three, so let's do that. And this is the polynomial I'm setting equal to zero, so the way we solve that is we factor it, right? So this factors as this, x minus three times x plus one. Right? So I can see where it's equal to 0. It's equal to 0 when x is equal to 3. And that's, by the way, that's um, that point right there. And it's equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. Right? That's that point right there. Uh, so f, not f prime, but f is increasing when? It's increasing when the derivative is positive. The derivative is positive when we're to the left of negative 1 or to the right of 3, because that's where this graph is above the x-axis, right? So we're not looking at where this graph is increasing. We're, we're, trying, we're thinking about where, the, where f is increasing. So we're looking at where f prime is positive. So that's on the interval negative infinity to negative 1. Union. 3 to infinity. 
What about decreasing? F is decreasing on, well, it's decreasing when the derivative is negative, right? Here's a graph of the derivative. The derivative is negative in here, right? So remember, it's not where this function is increasing or decreasing. This is the graph of the derivative. We just want to know where this function is negative. And it's between 1, negative 1 and 3. So it's de f is decreasing on the interval negative 1 to 3. Now, you may have said, well, we, we, we had to draw the graph of f prime to do this. Well, actually, you don't, all right? You actually don't need to draw the graph. I mean, it, in this case, it's easy. That easy it's probably the easiest way is to do that because it's so easy to graph. But you can also just check it, right? Once you get this and you know that the, you get these values here, uh, 3 and negative 1, you know that that splits uh, the x-axis into three intervals, right? Here's negative 1 and here's 3. And what you do now is you can just test the function in these intervals to see if it's positive or negative. So I'll go back to f prime, and I'll just plug in a number over here, like negative 2. If I plug negative 2 into this function, what do I get? Well, I get 3 times 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so 12, uh, minus 6 times negative 2, so plus 12, 24, uh, minus 9, uh, 24 minus 9, that's uh, uh, 15, right? It's positive, right? So I know it's positive over there. This is where f prime, not f, but f prime is positive. And then in between negative 1 and 3, well, what's a number in there? It's 0. So plug 0 in. You get negative 9. If you plug in 0 for x, that's negative. Uh, plug in a great number greater than 3, like 4. And you'll see, if you compute this out, you'll get something positive. So I don't need to draw the graph, but that is what we see in the graph, right? But without drawing the graph, you can still do this analytical check just by plugging numbers into this function and checking whether it's positive or negative in these intervals. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to draw the graph or if the graph is too hard to draw. Okay, but we've answered uh, the question. All right, so here is a graph of the original function f. Now remember, what we graphed the parabola was f prime. This is the graph of the original function. And you can see that the original function is increasing on the interval negative infinity up to negative 1 and from 3 to infinity, just what we said. And it's decreasing on the interval 1 to 3. And so what we had concluded is absolutely correct. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Uh, uh, f of x equals x over x squared plus 1. All right, I'm going to take up more space here. Okay, so we want to know um, where this function is increasing or decreasing. All right, so to do that, we need to know about its derivative. We want to use the increasing decreasing test. All right, so we have to compute the derivative. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, the derivative, uh, we use the quotient rule, right? So why don't you pause the video now, compute the derivative, just as an exercise, we'll check our answers. Okay, so what you should have done is uh, take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. We square the bottom, and that's it. Now we can simplify this a little bit, right? Um, this is x squared minus 2x squared, so that's going to be a negative x squared, and we have a 1. So it's going to be 1 minus x squared in the numerator, and then this x squared plus 1 squared in the denominator. That's the derivative. Okay. Now we want to know um, where is this positive and where is it negative. Now, uh, notice the denominator is always what? It's always positive because it's always square. It's, a, it's always a number greater than 1 right, because it's x squared plus 1, and uh, it, it, it's squared, so it's always positive. So this has no influence, absolutely no influence, on what the sign of f prime is. The only thing that has an influence on the sign of f prime is the numerator. So really, uh, if we want to know what the sign of f prime is, we'd really just need to look at uh, the, what the sign of the numerator is. That's what governs the sign of f prime. So how do we check the sine of 1 minus x squared? Well, we do what we did before. We'll take that function and set it equal to 0. Okay? And how do we deal with that? Well, you factor it, right? And we look at the solutions. We see there are two solutions, right? 
there's the one that makes this zero, which is one, and the one that makes this zero, which is negative one. And so that splits the real number line into three pieces. So let's check those pieces. If I'm over here, so like say, take the number negative two, all right? What is the sign of f prime at negative two? We'll plug negative two in for x. Get one minus negative two squared. That's one minus four, that's negative three, divided by something positive, right? So that's negative. Okay, take a number in here. Well, zero is my favorite number when doing this, right? So if you can ever choose zero, choose zero. It's usually the easiest to work with. And zero is in here. So plug zero in. One minus zero squared. It was po it's one. It's positive divided by something positive. It's positive. Okay, and what about over here? Take a number in here like uh, two, right? Plug in two for x. And it's uh, one minus four. is negative three divided by something positive. It's uh, negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. So I don't need to draw the graph to see that the function f prime, and that's what we're looking at, f prime, um, is negative here, positive here, and negative here. Now, according to the uh, increasing decreasing test, where f prime is positive is where f is increasing. All right? So f is increasing on the intervals, uh, well, just this interval, negative 1 to 1. Remember, always keep this an open interval as well. F is decreasing on the intervals. Well, it's decreasing when the derivative is negative. And so that's happening uh, here from negative infinity to negative 1. Union 1 to infinity. And so we've answered the question. And by the way, if you do want to look at the graph of the function, just to verify that what we said was correct, I do have it graphed back here. This is the function we were looking at, all right? This is x over x squared plus 1, and we see that it is increasing from negative 1 to 1, and it's decreasing from 1 to infinity and from negative infinity to negative 1. Right? So that verifies what we came up with. Okay, let's look at the last example here. We have f of x equals sine x plus cosine x, and we're looking at it on the interval um, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, So again, what we're going to need to do is compute its derivative. Okay, so here's our function. We're going to compute its derivative. The derivative of sine is, go ahead and compute this, and we'll check our work. Okay, so you got cosine x minus sine x. Great. Okay, so we need to see where this is equal to zero. Okay, well, solving this, let's see. Um, I can, if, if I add sine x to both sides, I see that uh, cosine uh, x equals sine x. If I divide both sides by cosine x, uh, I see that I have one equals sine x over cosine x. But what's sine over cosine? That is tangent. Okay, so we're looking where tangent uh, is equal to 1. Well, remember how tangent is defined. Uh, it's term determined in terms of the unit circle. A tangent is defined this way, it's sine over cosine. What is how is sine and cosine defined? Well, they are the x and y coordinates of a point on the unit circle at a given angle. In this case, the angle is given by um, uh, x here. So uh, when we take the y coordinate, sine is the y coordinate, right? And uh, cosine is the x coordinate. If I take uh, y over x, I'm getting the slope of this line. So tangent equals the slope. So when does this line have slope 1? Well, that would be going out this way. That's a perfect 45 degree angle here. Right? Well, that's our answer, right? We're asking what value of x, x is the angle uh, that gives us a, a slope 1, right? So 45 degrees. Of course, uh, in mathematics, we always use radians, so we have to think about what radian measure corresponds to 45 degrees, and uh, that is pi over 4. Now, we are not done here, all right? That's not the only answer, because if I extend this line down this way, I see there's another point down here. This line has slope 1, and it corresponds to 
this angle. So that is another angle that has tangent of 1 because it has it's aligned with the same slope. So what's the angle here? Well, if you look at what I did, I went to uh, 45 degrees and then added 180 degrees. Or in other words, I went pi over 4 radians and then added pi radians. This is pi over 4 plus pi, right? So that is 5 pi over 4. That's that other angle there. All right, great. So we got both angles. And that's all of the angles in the interval 0 to 2 pi. That's what we're working with. So this is where the derivative is 0. Okay, so what we've taken is we've taken this interval here from um, 0 to 2 pi. And we've split it here at pi over 4 and at 5 pi over... Okay, that's that should be way over here. I mislabeled that very badly. But anyway, it, we've split the, the interval into three parts, all right? The, it, the scale is very off. But um, now we'll check these pieces, right? So in this piece, what is the sine of f prime? That's what we're going to look at. So between 0 and pi over 4. So take an angle in here like, um, I don't know, pi over 6, right? Uh, if I plug in pi over 6 here, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is uh, 1 half. Well, that's a bigger number minus a smaller number, so it'll be positive there. All right? Um, how about an angle in here? Like maybe uh, pi. Pi is, pi is in here, right? Somewhere, right? It's between these things. So plug in pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. So, okay, it's negative in here. Okay, and then what about in this interval here? Well, how about like um, 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 is in here, right? Somewhere. 3 pi over 2 is actually corresponds to the angle that puts us down here. Um, 5 pi over 4 is here, and 2 pi is here. So it's, it's in between, right? So at 3 pi over 2, cosine is the x-coordinate, it's 0, and sine is negative 1. So 0 minus negative 1 is positive. Okay, so I see that f prime is positive in this interval and in this interval, so that is, according to the increasing-decreasing test, where the function is increasing. So f is increasing on the intervals 0 to pi over 4, union 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi. f is decreasing where the derivative is negative, so that's from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. Okay, so that answers that question. And I happen to have the function graphed right here. And you can see that the uh, function... Um, now, we're only looking at the interval uh, 0 to 2 pi. So you can ignore that stuff to the left of 0 there. But on the interval 0 to 2 pi, it is increasing from 0 to pi over 4. And from 5 pi over 4 to 2 pi. And it is decreasing from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. Just like we said. And finally, we have one more problem here. Now, this is a this is a good problem to pay attention to because you'll see this a lot in a lot of um, test questions and things like that. So, we have a graph of the derivative of a continuous function. On what intervals is that function increasing or decreasing? So, the naive mistake that a lot of people will make is to look at this and say, well, it's going down from here to here, so it's decreasing on the interval 0 to 3. Incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Maybe you saw it. Because we are not looking at a graph of the function. We are looking at a graph of its derivative. Notice the graph of the derivative of the function is shown. So we're not being asked, where is the derivative increasing and decreasing? We are being asked, where is the original function increasing or decreasing? So let's look back at the increasing-decreasing test. A function is increasing where the derivative 
is positive. So I just have to look at this graph and see where this function is positive. That means above the x-axis. So if I look over here, it is above the x-axis from 0 to 2, and from 4 to 6, and from 8 to, it looks like it just goes on and on and on, so 8 to infinity, all right? So Okay, and where is f decreasing? Well, that is where the derivative is negative, right? So this is the graph of the derivative, so just see where it's below the x-axis. So here we go from 2 to 4, and from 6 to 8. So keep that in mind. Make sure you know what you're looking at, right? If you want to know um, where a function is increasing or decreasing, Make sure you know if you're looking at the graph of the function itself or if it's derivative, because depending on what you're looking at, you'll answer the question um, based on different features of that graph. Okay, so that was the increasing-decreasing test. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next video.